see here. So uh, first of all, welcome everyone to another Encore.ca Zoom presentation. And today we have with us Alejandro Tabillo, current ATP number 174. Alejandro competes on the ITF and ATP tour and has represented Chile in Davis Cup action. Alejandro grew up in the Mississauga, Ontario region where he competed and trained out of Ace Tennis and the National Tennis Center before moving to Florida. Alejandro has won numerous Canadian national titles in both singles and doubles. It's too many for me to count, but maybe he can fill us in on how many it was later on. Uh, this past January, Alejandro competed in the men's singles at the Australian Open, winning three matches to qualify for the main draw. Alejandro then went on to win his first round of the main draw in an epic five-set battle before bowing out to John Isner of the USA in the second round. Alejandro has won three ITF men's titles in his career, the first coming in 2016 in a Chilean ITF Futures event. Alejandro then followed that up with another Futures title in 2018 and an ITF 25,000 title in 2019. So welcome, Alejandro. Thanks, Mike. Uh, pleasure yeah. to be here. Thank you for the invite. For sure, for sure. Thanks for taking the time to do this. And uh, you can, you know, it's it's so nice that we have so many so many of uh, the students and coaches on here to to listen. Uh, maybe you can give us a quick update as to what you've been able to do during this uh, difficult time for everyone. Yeah, well, I got a little lucky because um, when everything happened, I, I was coming back from Sweden, from Davis Cup, to uh, I was in Indian Wells. And uh, I just got to the to the venue because I was looking for the doctor because I had a little injury. And um, five minutes being in Indian Wells, they were like, yeah, um, turn has been canceled. Um, I mean, nothing much we can do more. So then after I went back home, and since then I've been here, so it was easy to get back home. I wasn't like, I was supposed to be in South Africa, so it was one of the choices that I was going to do. So glad it was it was pretty close. Been here, been training, just fitness. I've been focusing on my on my fitness right now. Uh, I've gotten a lot of um, routines and stuff like that that I can do uh, at home. So I've been doing that, and thankfully I live in an um, apartment building, so we have a tennis court here that hasn't really been closed yet. So I've been hitting a little bit um, when the weather's nice, and and mainly just fitness. Awesome, awesome. That's that's great. That's great that you have a tennis court close by. I I know some of our students have the same thing. They're they're lucky enough that they have a court in the backyard, but otherwise, yeah, all the kids have been pretty much doing the same thing lots of tennis and lots of listening and research and so yeah. yeah thank you thank you for being here to to do this for us that's great um let's uh if you don't mind let's jump right into the questions because i've kind of asked the kids to to prepare questions for you and i think this is the best way to make it very interactive for them so basically like if anybody has a question that you want to make sure you get off which hopefully you all do um, then use the raise hand feature within the Zoom chat. And if you don't use that feature, then I'm just going to start uh, picking on some of my favorite students and then they can, uh, they can kind of lead us with their question right off the bat. So um, I think we'll just unmute uh, Ariana right off the bat, put her on the spot, and hopefully she has a question for Alejandro. <laughs> wow, I was not expecting that. But... Um... <laughs> Hi, it's nice to meet you. Um, my question um, is just about how your transition from juniors to pro was and just how it affected you mentally and just, you know, like if there's a story like into it. Well, yeah, I mean, my uh, transition was a, a little rough because I was a pretty good junior. I got top 30 um, ITF. And one, playing and winning so much on, on the ITF, and especially I played a lot of tournaments in Canada coming from a lot of, uh, like, tournament wins and, and stuff like that um, was kind of like a hard hit because I really, really wasn't expected, uh, expecting or ready for that um, level, I guess. And I think that was one of the, the biggest challenges because of uh, how well everybody did in that level. And um, I thought one junior coming in winning a lot of tournaments and matches it was you, you think it's going to be easy stuff like that so i think that's that's something that i didn't really expect and i should have prepared better 
because it took me a couple of years to really like adapt to the whole level and and everybody is like in the same uh doing the same thing working as hard as you or a lot are even working harder so it took me a little time to realize that and uh once i got that i feel like it's it's helped me and and i've been able to do a, a pretty big jump since then awesome awesome and thank you ariana that was a great question uh let's go with dean dean has his hand up dean go ahead can you hear me yep um my question was like how did you choose between pursuing like a career in college or like getting getting um a degree and like going pro yeah well um that question. was kind of a tough decision for me because i was training at the academy in img at the time and i had uh, schooling in voluntary and practicing uh, morning and afternoon so I was almost, like my whole life I was set on going pro and that was like my big uh, goal and um, when I was at IMG they kind of like changed my mind a little bit and I was starting to talk to universities and stuff like that so I was kind of set but um, I'm lucky enough to have a family that was really supportive and they they decided and we all decided together that it was best like after all the sacrifices we've done and all the hard work we put in there to just go go pro and uh if i needed to go to college i could do that after my career which uh tennis tennis pro's career is very short so um i was just lucky enough to have a family that was really supportive in that and uh, that helped me a lot to to keep going with my goal and my dream awesome wow that's 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 a fantastic answer and uh dean thank you for the question that was a really great question um oh here we go we have uh Andrea Cabio. Uh, let me just, there we go. Andrea, go ahead. Hi. 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 How do you mentally, you mentally prepare for a match with? Andrea, I had to mute you because I don't know if it was just for me, but there was so much echo. So uh, maybe we'll come back to you. Maybe somebody else can raise their hands and just try to figure out um, your, your sound system because I think uh, I'm going to lose every participant in this chat if I turn you back on right now. Or maybe what you can do is, can you type your question in the chat? So if you click chat, uh, it will come up. And in the meantime, uh, I'm going to unmute Dennis. Dennis, go ahead. Uh, how many baselines did you run at ACE? <laughs> I don't know if I was running Alejandro at the baseline. Did I, Alejandro, when you were there, did I whip yeah. balls in the corner and you had to run side to side for 10 I mean, 20, I remember a few balls. that I was, I was running side to side with you guys. I, I feel like we did run a lot, a lot there. Like even like okay. the, the whole length <laughs> of the courts, which is tough. But um, yeah, I can't remember exactly. I mean, we did, we did look a lot in that. <laughs> I think Dennis has to do those a fair bit, so he's wondering if, if, it's, if it's fair that he has to do that a lot. So thank you for that question, though, Dennis. <laughs> okay, let's see if uh, Andrea hasn't typed in her question yet, but maybe any second. Let's go to Mihailo. Go ahead. Um, hi. Can you hear me? Hello. Yep, we can hear you. How was your pressure when you played Australian Open against John Isner? And how did you deal with it? Wow, good oh, well. question. Yeah, I mean, there's always, in every match, almost, like, there's always a lot of pressure. But um, at that moment, with everything coming up to that match, it was, I was already with so many emotions, with ups and, like, downs during other matches that at that point I was just glad I was there. And, like, I was just enjoying the entire match, like, to the fullest. Because uh, just being in Australia for me after, like, the year I had, it was just already, like, a dream come true. So um, qualifying was, for me, already, the, like, the maximum. So being just having the opportunity to play with Isner, was was amazing so wasn't really thinking about the pressure I just uh um it was more like obviously I wanted to win but I just took every, the whole match tried to learn from it a lot and I just I just enjoyed it a lot awesome awesome 
uh, Andrea is wondering, how, do you, how did you mentally prepare for that match? But maybe you just touched on that a little bit. Like, I guess you were just, you know, very excited and very proud to be in this moment and how much you had accomplished and yeah. just go out there, a- take everything in stride. And Yeah, it was just huge for, for my whole, like the whole team, for everything we, we worked on in preseason on, uh, with my family and everything. So it was more of uh, more tried to do my best, obviously try and win, but obviously more of like, take what he does because it was my first time competing for like against the top 20 so it's more yeah. try and learn everything and try to soak up everything that he does and try to uh, apply it to my game after and just really uh, analyze everything better awesome awesome uh noah go ahead all right hi nice to meet you my question is do you have any other hobbies other than playing tennis uh, yeah, I mean, right now I like to I like to play a lot of soccer. It's the only thing, only sport I've really done besides uh, tennis that I, I went to soccer camp for a few weeks once. Uh, but after that, I mean, just just mainly Netflix, video games, stuff like that. And now with my girlfriend, I've been doing a little bit of TikTok, so that's kind of a hobby in quarantine right now. So. <laughs> that's awesome. Good stuff. Good stuff. Okay, thank you for that, Noah. Let's go to... Alexandra. Alexandra, go ahead. Hi there. Um, sorry, I came a little late to the party, but um, let me know if this was asked already. Oh, man. Wait, what was my question? Sorry, give me a moment. <laughs> ah, okay. So, um, basically, in this situation, what would you say is, like, the most important thing for someone who's trying to stay on track uh, for, you know, professional tennis? Yeah. Well, I mean, I mean, mainly I would say uh, not really get this uh, discouraged with the whole tour and everything. Cause I mean, for me, confidence was a lot like the big issue. I didn't really think I was uh, ready or I had the game to be up there. So I think mainly even in matches, that's, that was my biggest, uh, I mean, battle to get through because I would always doubt almost everything I was doing on court, on court. Like, uh, if I was going to go there, or, like, if I can do this, if, if I can beat them, I always thought, like, if he was ranked higher, I, I couldn't, I couldn't win, stuff like that. So, um, after juniors, it was, it was, it was tough because everybody plays so well. So, it's, it's just mainly knowing that one week can change basically your entire career. Because, I mean, for me, it was, it was almost that. I mean, one week it clicked. And after that, I, uh, I started winning, winning. And after, in like, Dominican Republic I was playing in 2018 finishing the year after that I did a bunch of semis and futures and then after that it just started playing challengers went up went up and it just everything just came together so for me I was I was in that position where I didn't know if I could do it I was always in the 600 700s so it was tough for me thinking that if I can really do it but when I got stuck in my head that just one week just keep going hard and then maybe something will happen it it made me play a lot better and I kind of relaxed in the, in the court. That's awesome. I, I think that's a great response. I mean, I, I've heard that from other players too before where they, they felt, you know, low on the confidence or they weren't sure if they were going to be able to break through. And then it's, it's just one week for them and, and it all comes together. And, and yeah, I remember following you a little bit during that time after you won that tournament. And then I saw like, how many times you were going deep in the tournament week after week after week, and it just snowballed. So, wow, that's that's really amazing. Um, Lucas, go ahead. Um, uh, hi, thank you for doing this. Um, since we can't get on court, what's one of your favorite ways to keep your cardio up during, like, the quarantine? Uh, well, actually, I never really did it before, and I started doing it now in quarantine. I've been doing a lot of hits, which is, uh, I mean, like, high intensity uh like drills and you do it for like a minute 30 minutes seconds and then you rest for a little bit and then keep going so that's that's something that inside at least that if i can't go run or if it's too cold or stuff like that i've been i've been focusing a lot on that which uh, has helped even like for for like warm-ups i've been thinking about more like uh high intensity warm-ups than a little bit of strength work if I want to do legs, arms, stuff like that. And then again, like a really hard, hard uh, cardio hit workout. And then I would do that a couple of times and focus a lot on my abs. So I've been doing, been doing that mainly inside. Awesome. That's what I've been doing too. Nice work. <laughs> That's yeah. great. Good stuff. Good, good. 
Uh, let's have, let's see if I mute. Yes, Mohammed, go ahead. Um, hi. So my question is, how's your life in ATP tour? <laughs> well, I mean, it's been pretty nice so far because, like, I mean, I'm still kind of in the Challenger tour, but it definitely is a difference and it feels different from playing in, uh, uh, like, ITF and, like, Futures kind of stuff. Like, I mean, they tr like, the whole treatment and the whole setup of the tournament is, like, a lot better, I would say. Um, like hospitality with the hotels, uh, you get ball boys, like everything seems like a lot, a lot more professional. So it's been, it's been pretty nice. I mean, the, the whole transition, um, pretty good. And I mean, it was first time this year playing Australian Open because I didn't get to play it in juniors. And that, the Grand Slam itself is just, I've never experienced anything like that. So it was, it was pretty nice experience to, to live. Awesome, awesome. Yeah, you were you you would have been there for quite a while, right? Playing five matches. So yeah, that's great. Thank you, Mohammed, for that question. Uh, let's go just down the list. So we will go to Bianca. Go ahead. Um. Hi. So my question for you is: What is the most important attribute or factor that helped you get through some of your toughest matches? Oh well. Um. I would. I would. I would say more my my uh, fitness, which was always kind of a, a factor, uh, even in juniors and coming up uh, most of my professional career. Um, and then I, I made a little change and uh, lost a lot of weight. And I even stopped for like four months and just training because I needed to get a little bit more weight on and stuff like that. But mainly after that, it's been it's been uh, a lot of focus on, on my fitness because before there were a few matches where I couldn't last like the whole three sets, like a, like a tough battle of like seven, five, six, four is like a, a long three setter. And um, for example, without the fitness, I wouldn't have been able to go through the five sets like I did in, in Australia. So I think my fitness has given me a lot of, a lot of confidence and given me less pressure on the court. Cause I know that if I'm not um, playing my best tennis, I can, I can outlast them with my, with my fitness, I can run, I can run like all day. So um, I think that's, that's the fitness and mental has helped me a lot to, to do a step, big step. Awesome. Wow. I mean, I, I hope you all heard that and I hope you all caught his story there. I mean, at one point in his, in his career, he's struggling to, to play two or three sets and he make it a priority to, to work on this area. And then he goes and, and he wins three matches to qualify for the Australian Open. And I mean, I don't know, was that the first time you had ever played a five set match? Yeah, no, like I wanted, even in the preseason, I kind of wanted to try and play a five set and stuff like that, but never really got the time. But during the preseason, we, we really worked on the fitness and side to sides and like lasting like those 20 ball rallies and stuff like that. And I think that really helped me because that was, that was the first time I ever played a five setter. Like that. Awesome. And so it, yeah, so he goes from struggling to play long two set or three set matches. He focuses on his fitness, and the first time he ever plays a five set match is the biggest match of his life, and and he wins the match. So wow, I mean that's like wow. Kudos to you. That's that's pretty incredible. Uh, let's go with Alex. Go ahead, Alex. When you were playing matches, would you be like nervous because of like the crowd who's always like cheering people or like get nervous from like you make a mistake in front of people? Uh, no, I mean, that's never really been my issue, I think, for like to get nervous because I've always been like more with the crowd. Like, yeah, like I like when people uh, cheer on and there's a lot of people watching. I think my, my I've always like more felt nervous and felt pressure of like like the outcome itself, that's always been my struggle. Like knowing that if I lose, um, what people are gonna say, like what my family's gonna say, stuff like that. So that's always been my struggle. And I think uh, after I've been doing so well, I haven't really thought about that. And I play like a lot more clear without the pressure or just thinking about stuff like that. So, I mean, I would say like, if you can just like block that out and just like focus on, on your game or what you're doing, it'll, It'll, you'll see a huge change on it. Awesome. Great question, Alex. Thank you for that. Uh, let's go over to Anna Tabunchik. Go ahead, Anna. Um, 
my question is, what do you do to mentally prepare for every match? Like one specific thing that you do? Um, well, yeah, ob- uh, before every match, I uh, always talk to my coach or if I'm not with my coach at that time, if I'm trying to finish coach, we always uh, either uh, face on or talk about really the my, my like tactical strategy, where I'm going to play to him, his weaknesses, stuff like that. So mentally, that's always the priority, like the night and the morning before the match, because uh, knowing clear uh, where you're going to play or where he will hit if like his best shots uh, for me mentally it's like much more prepared and it's, it's like I know what he's going to do before he does it so it's like I'm less less nervous on on uh, his game or my game because I'm more clear on, on I have I have everything set on what I'm going to do awesome awesome yeah I think that's really great for the juniors to hear how important it is to communicate with your coach and and be very clear about what it is for your game plan. Very good. Uh, Christian, you're next up. Um, What are some of the physical and mental challenges of being on the tour? Um, Well, physically, now that I did like a a full like challenger tour last year, which, which uh, was a lot tougher I, I would say for me because the level you can really feel the the difference level with fitness and everything from other players well I would say that I went I played too many tournaments in uh, in a short period of time so physically I was finishing the year uh, pretty tired and I could feel that I wasn't playing at my best and I couldn't last uh, like the matches that, that I was normally doing at the beginning because I went almost three months almost non-stop because I missed uh a little bit of uh, tournaments the year before so I mean mentally and physically just being out on tour and like playing uh, every week is tough so I would say like just um, it's very important to plan out a, a good schedule and and uh, make sure that you don't overdo it with tournaments because I mean coming back uh, training and getting everything sorted out and reorganizing your game plan everything helps a lot awesome awesome uh, let's jump over to Sasha. Go ahead, Sasha. Hi. Um, my question is like, what are like some of your goals for like the pro tour? And like one more, and I have another one. It's like, do you ever regret not going to college for tennis? Good question. Um, well, uh, the first one at the beginning when I, I wasn't doing very well. Um, yeah, I mean, I always thought about what would have happened if I did go to university or stuff like that but um like again I was I was lucky that I had a supporting family that even when I was like at my lowest and uh, I had like no confidence and almost no motivation to continue like the pro career they always like they were back back me up and wanted me to 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 keep trying and stuff like that so um right now I don't regret like not going to university but I mean at, at there are some points where obviously wanted to know or experience that like team competition but but yeah I mean right now I'm happy I'm happy with what I'm doing and I'm happy with the support of my family and with uh, the goals I mean finishing thinking about how I started this year I was hoping that I could finish top 100 the the year but considering what what happened with um, uh, with everything now and the and canceling all the tournaments I mean, I just hope that it can start this year so I can play all the slams that I that I wanted to play because starting the year, I, I was able to secure Australian Open, but nothing uh, assured me that I was going to play all, all the other slams. And, um, yeah, for me, the, the main goal was to play all four and possibly in the near future become top 50 or, or I mean, my, my dream goal is top 10 or, or be number one. So. Awesome. Awesome. Good question, Sasha. Thank you uh joey go ahead um what's your favorite part uh on the atp tour <laughs> um well i like i like the, the the traveling obviously and i mean just just really competing i love i love uh right now in the in the atp and the in the challenges tour a lot of people come out and support so i mean uh the last few, I've gotten a lot of Chilean fans. I got a lot of attention from from Chile, so it's been nice. Where everybody, you wherever, everywhere you go, everybody's 
uh, keeping track, supporting from afar, sending messages. I mean, just just that part uh, really, I mean, makes me happy. Just knowing that if I win a match, makes like other people in Chile happy or stuff like that. So uh, mainly, mainly it's just the competing part. Awesome, awesome. Uh, thank you for that, Joey. Let's go over to, I don't think we've heard from Mandisa yet. So Mandisa, go ahead. Go ahead. What is what are some of their, your strategies when you for managing your emotions in when you lose some of the points? Awesome, that's a great question, and actually somebody typed me a very similar question as well. So thank you for that question. Very good. Well, mainly for me and during the match, um, I look a lot to my routines, like my. Uh, I like to breathe a lot during the match. Um, I think that, that kind of calms me down. Uh, lately, I've been trying new things, like going to the towel, taking a little bit more time because I seem to rush a lot when I when I get uh, frustrated or nervous or, or any like emotions. I start to um, play too fast and I start going all over the place. So, so I mainly say breathe. And also when I'm with my coach, I, I kind of like just look at him to to feel some assurance or, or, or feel like kind of more safe on the court and know that I'm doing uh, everything well. So mainly that, I mean, uh, I like to stick to my routines. Awesome. Awesome. That's great. Great question and, and a great answer. Very good. Uh, let's go back to, it looks like Mihailo has another question. Mihailo, go ahead. Um, what are your routines off court and how do you keep your discipline up? Well, off court, um, I when I travel, I'm a little different because I like even everything has to be kind of perfect. Like, I mean, coming to the to the hotel room in my room, like I leave, I'm a little bit OCD with everything on on uh, my clothes, like how I organize everything. Like having that in my room at the beginning when I get to the tournaments, I feel more clear in my mind. So I I, I kind of do that a lot now. If I'm doing well during the tournaments, I like to eat same places, uh, like eat same foods. I'm kind of like superstitious like that. And uh, mainly, I mean, I keep up now that I travel a little bit more with like uh, my physio and stuff like that. We, we before the matches, warm up really well, loosen up. Sometimes they, they stretch me out, stuff like that. And uh, also a lot of talking to my, my coach about my, my opponent watching videos of my opponent, stuff like that. So like I'm, I'm a little ready before the day before and a little bit in the morning. So it's a little fresh and yeah, just like good warm up stuff like that. Awesome. Uh, we have another question from Andrea here. She says, uh, if you, ha if you have given a chance, if you were given a chance to go back when you were under 12, is there any changes on your training that you would do? Yeah, I would say a lot. My fitness, like I said before, because I was... Uh, he probably would have looked for a better coach, first of all. Like, <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> No, I don't think so. I mean, I, I always remember my days and days. I mean, I, I, it was a big part of, of my development. So, But yeah, I would say mainly my fitness because of um, I was always like on the heavier side on all my, my junior career and stuff like that. So... Uh, I wish I knew earlier how, how physically intense and how everybody took the fitness series because at this point, that's that's almost like the priority for everybody. Everybody's like very fit and they can be out there all day. So um, I would have I would have loved to be physically better for the for the tour. Yeah, it's, it's a really good question, Andrea. And, and Alejandro, he wasn't challenged too much when like when Alejandro was under 12. I remember taking him to play the under 16 provincials and he, he was still coming like top eight at under 16 provincials. So he, he wasn't challenged as much. And when you're not challenged as much, you know, sometimes you, you get away or you, you think you're on the right path. But it's, it's tough for a 11 year old to know that. So yeah, it was a really great question. Thank you for that. Uh, let's go back to Noah. Let's see here. There we go. Right. Go ahead, Noah. Um, so you said you like soccer. What's your favorite soccer team? <laughs> um, well, in, uh, in Chile, 
there's this team called Everton, just like in England, but uh, Chilean version. And I mean, internationally, I would say Barcelona. Okay, but you have TFC right behind you. Come on. Yeah, I mean, here <laughs> I, I would follow a little bit Toronto FC. <laughs> but awesome. I mean, big, big favorites would be those two. Good, good stuff. Good stuff. Uh, let's go over to. Sometimes it's not unmuted. Let's see here. Dean, go ahead, Dean. Um, I was wondering how you manage your diet and also um, what you eat on a regular day. Oh, well. I mean, now I've gotten, uh, I have a nutritionist that I work with and I, I go see her uh, when I'm in Chile, like every, like so often every week almost just to make sure where I'm at, they evaluate me and stuff like that. So um, I've, I've uh, that's helped me stay in check. She sent me like uh, plans on what I should eat during competition, off competition, stuff like that. So uh, right now, I haven't really been focused on it that much on the on the specific plan, just because of the can't play tennis or or stuff like that. So um, mainly just been eating what my mom makes. Uh, I mean, try to eat as healthy as possible. More like uh, not as much carbs, more protein, stuff like that. So uh, been watching that. But yeah, uh, thankfully with my nutritionist, she helps me stay in check a lot. So awesome, awesome, good stuff. I remember when Alejandro had to play the final of the Ace Cup. He he won his semifinal match and he wasn't feeling very well after the match and he was a little bit sick. And then, you know, I went to the restaurant at the front of the club and half an hour later he's beating he's eating a cheeseburger and fries. And now he's just finished his cheeseburger and fries and he has to run out on the court and play as arch nemesis. Well, it wasn't really his arch nemesis because he beat the guy every time, but he's got to go play, you know, his, his nemesis, David Bolston, in the finals after being sick and now eating a cheeseburger and fries. And, you know, it's like, oh, my God, what's going to happen in this match? And, of course, Alejandro beats the guy 6-love, six 6-1. Six so it wasn't too eventful. My, but... <laughs> my parents always remember that story, and they, they, they tell it to everybody. <laughs> I tell this story a lot, too. <laughs> <laughs> Let's jump back to Anna. Go ahead, Anna. Um, do you remember my dad, Carrillo? He was a yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Carrillo, and maybe he remembers Vida too. I don't know if you remember Vida. Vida was Carrillo's daughter, and and she was yeah. Maybe you were they were always there. working. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Always working. <laughs> okay, let's go to uh, Alex. You have your hand up. Go ahead. Um, when you would lose a match and like you wanted to learn more of your mistakes, would you like rewatch your match to like to see your mistakes and improve? Yeah, that's a, that's a good question because um, that's also something was very difficult for me because I would take losses very hard and um, something with um, my coaches now that I've been focusing more on not seeing the the negative and the bad parts of my match because I would get really down on myself and uh, be really critical on, on myself. And um, they've, they've helped me realize, I mean, the loss isn't, isn't that important. It's more if you can learn from it. And we've been analyzing the matches better lately. So uh, yeah, the, throughout the, even this quarantine, we've been watch, we're watching old matches. So I can kind of stay with uh, a little bit with a competitive mindset and, and learning on what I do good and what I need to do better on the moments where I start losing. Um, so yeah, I mean, that helps a lot and it's something we've been, we've been starting to um, do much more and, and I feel a lot, diff a lot, a big difference on court. Awesome. Awesome. How, how much do you, or do you use any of the statistics that are provided? So I'm not sure if, if the tour provides you with statistics or if your team has statistics or if there's any analytics involved, but do you use this at all? And if so, in what way? Yeah, we've been using it a lot actually because on the Chandra tour, on, they they have every match on live stream and then you can rewatch okay. it. So the good thing is that they have the all the statistics with uh, the serve, the return, the winners and stuff like that. And we've been mainly using the statistics part for my serve because I was struggling a lot on my uh, on my like holding serves and stuff like that. So uh, we started trying to get the numbers up, not 
because we were, I was focused too much before on, on my first serve percentage instead of the, for example, the first serve win percentage. So uh, we started trying to get that one up because, I mean, you can, you can get all the first serves in, but if you don't win uh, a point off your serve, it's not going to do anything. So we started uh, trying to use that to get my speed up on my serve, change more directions, do, do more things, and see if, the, if that percentage keeps going up. Awesome. Awesome. That's really good. Really good stuff. Uh, let's hear from Mihailo again. Go ahead, Mihailo. Um, at what age did you go to IMG and how did it help you? Um, a great question. I think I went to IMG when I was around 15 or 16 because I remember it was right after I won uh, 14's Eddie Her and they gave me a scholarship to, to IMG. And well, at first, I think it helped me a lot because of um, because I was coming one of the, like, the, the, the future players and stuff like that. They were really focused on me. Um, I, was, I had a lot of players to work on, with, work with. So throughout the years, I think that was the best that I, I had a lot of players to play with and uh, everybody played really well. It's just that throughout the years, once you just keep going, because it's such a big academy, you kind of get lost in, in with all the with all the other players and, and you don't really get specific help uh, as much. So I would say at the beginning of the years, it, it helped me a lot to grow uh, with competition wise, a lot of players to compete with. Um, but after that, I mean, uh, you, you just they, you kind of get lost with everybody. So I think at the end, it was it was uh, one of the decisions of mine also to to leave IMG and go to to my old academy. Awesome, awesome. Um, I'm just gonna pick a few people now that I know uh, and get some questions out of them because they were supposed to bring a question. So um, let's go with uh, Ag. Go ahead, Ag, if you have a question for Alejandro. Yeah. Uh, my question is, um, what is the difference between playing a Davis Cup match and a normal ATP match, and how are your like emotions different? It's actually That's pretty a pretty good question. great question, AG. You should have had your hand up first. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's um, it's it's kind of strange the feelings and and different because in every way of how you prepare for the match and uh, how you kind of like think in between the match. Because I mean, for uh, an ATP tournament, for example, you kind of just focus on that match and you don't really like save yourself but like I mean you take it a match at a time and and uh you really focus on that one player but I mean with with uh Davis Cup it's crazy because you feel everybody cheering on cheering you on I mean you feel the not like pressure but you're playing for your country so it obviously weighs a, a little bit on you um you kind of the energy it gives you is just like you have to leave like everything on court because it's just that one match basically so um, it's tough mentally just to knowing all that coming to the match and and preparing yourself because it's you know you're gonna play that one person uh coming to it like weeks and weeks before so it's just figuring out how you're gonna do that match and then the other player that you, that you have to play but um it's tough because I mean, with Davis, you're playing for you and and basically your whole country. And then with with uh, ATP, it's just it's just a little bit more of the pressure that it's it's all on you. You know, like it's all like you, this is your career, this is your future. So. Great, great question, Ag. Thanks for that. Uh, let's go over to Sierra. Sierra, go ahead. Um. So. You already talked a little bit about this, but my question was, how have you dealed, how, how have you dealt with tough losses throughout your career? Yeah, um, I mean, mainly that now that um, I've been traveling more with, with people, like, I mean, with coaches, fitness coaches, stuff like that. Um, I have, have more people to talk about it with and um, talk about the losses, talk about what I did wrong in those, uh, in that match or what I did right to talk about what I can build from. Uh, stuff like that. I mean, before I would travel really like alone. I wouldn't travel with anybody. So it'd be just like eating me up the entire day and stuff like that. So, um, yeah, I mean, I would say, I would say speaking a lot and then try to analyze very, very well uh, the match and just not get up, uh, get all 
on with the loss because because that that kind of just brings down brings down the confidence and everything you've kind of been working towards the the tournaments awesome awesome great question uh what sur this is from uh, Juliana. Uh, what surface do you like to play tennis on the most? And have you played any grass court matches? Uh, well, I've only played twice on grass, which was uh, juniors. I played the uh, gray one in Roehampton and then Wimby. Um, okay. And I mean, my, I would say my all-time favorite and obviously the one I, I always feel confident and uh, I know I can play well on, it would be hard indoor because, I mean, I grew up on on that and, uh, I mean, I always feel confident playing in it. Even in Sweden, I knew, like, I mean, I could play well on that. And But lately, I've been, I've been really enjoying playing on clay since I moved to Santiago. I've been training a lot on that and I think one of them, like best results I've, I've been getting has been on, on clay. I've been like very consistent on that, on that surface. So, um, I mean, all time favorite would be hard in there. Awesome. Awesome. Good question. Uh, let's go to, I think it's the Christian. I know hopefully because <laughs> I'm putting him on the spot. Christian, uh, go ahead. Uh, what keeps you motivated while you're on tour? Oh, that's a good question. Well, I mean, I think that how the tournament stopped, it stopped on a very good note for me. And I've been doing very well. And with all the tournaments that I did, I've been playing like my best tennis. So I think uh, just knowing that and that knowing that it can start like in any time uh, this year, I just like it keeps me motivated on wanting to stay at that level and not go away from from what I've been doing and what I've, I've been achieving. So it's something that mentally for me, it's, it's, uh, I want to keep working. I want to keep playing tennis, even if it's indoor, I want to do like fitness every day because, uh, um, I've worked so hard to get to that level that I just really don't want to lose it. So, um, I think that's, that's the biggest motivation for me. Awesome. Uh, this question is from Griffin. Uh, he wants to know what was the most important, important part of your game when you were a junior probably that freaking backhand yeah that, that <laughs> backhand has, has always been my lifesaver I think and I mean being aggressive I mean I think all my junior career I was very very aggressive I was rarely one of those to like just uh defend or or, or run the entire time so um I mean and that's what I'm still trying to work on because I've been losing a little bit, like just playing a little bit too back sometimes. But I mean, yeah, playing aggressive on the line and uh, and that back end, yeah, it's been my been my go to always. Awesome, awesome. Yeah, I mean, we've we've had some some different conversations with players, and and they've kind of stressed the importance for them when they were younger to play like really that that kind of game that will get them into the pros and will help them through the pros and and I think that that definitely really helped you as a as a young player playing that mature game yeah. right from the start um Anna go ahead Anna um hi um my question is when you're down in a match how do you get your motivation back that's a good question um well even in uh in Australia because that was for me the obviously my biggest tournament and literally I think every match I was down uh, in the even in the first round qualities I was down um I was down three love double break so I was like thinking already that I was I was um like out of it that I mean I mean it was great uh, I was in qualities and stuff like that one starts thinking but the thing is that I mean I was just hoping and just looking for that one opportunity that one little break that he got me and um and just change the momentum that's what we've been working a lot on on with my coach that uh even if i'm down uh not really not really think about the the score just play your game because there's always that one that one little second that one little chance that he'll give you and just gotta, gotta take it and and be aggressive with it uh because i mean there's always that one little that little uh chance that it'll give you so uh that's that's what i've been working more on on if i'm down not not to get um frustrated or anything just look for that one opportunity 
Awesome. Awesome. Great, great question and really great answer. Uh, Josh, go ahead. Josh. Maybe Josh can type us his question because I don't think his it's always something maybe with Josh is going on. Let's hear from Sophia. Sophia, do you have a question for Alejandro? Um, yes. Um, how do you deal with pressure like during a match or like just pressure to win? W which one again? Um, like how do you deal with pressure during a match? Um, well, during a match, I mean, I just, I just focus mainly on, on what I'm going to do on uh on the court so I try not to really think about uh the results anymore i mean i just really focus on my uh my strategies on what i'm doing well and stuff like that but um because before i would i would really always think about uh, uh with the win or lose uh stuff like that so uh yeah i mean mainly just just focusing on on what i'm doing and because it's the only thing i can really control Awesome. A uh, question from Josh. So he was wondering when you warm up with your opponent before your match, what do you look for? Uh, I think you probably scout your opponents before the match even starts. So is there something specific you look for even before you're warming up? Certain patterns they play or their game style or what is it you're looking for before you play someone? Uh, no, I mean, yeah, I, I mainly look at everything before the match. Uh, the one thing that really got to me and I started thinking about it a little differently is uh, when when I played Davis Cup, uh, Masu, my, our captain, which was like top top 10 in in, uh, in his time and played a lot of Davis Cup, stuff like that. He, he told me, because it was my first time playing Davis Cup also, he told me as soon as I get on court, especially during the circumstances because it was Davis Cup, uh, Davis Cup he, he, he wanted me to really like uh stare him down show him like be bouncing around show him that i'm there trying to kind of like intimidate him a little bit and like make make myself like like show my presence uh and and that's what i've been kind of trying to do now because like, i mean it, it i mean i i kind of think it, it could help and and something that i mean it's it's good to try to always be kind of active and, and and show that you're there you know awesome Awesome. Great advice from a pretty experienced player. I remember he did well at the Olympics one year. I think Chile did very well in that Olympics. At yeah. The, uh, yeah, it's very good. Uh, let's go back to Noah. Go ahead, Noah. All right. So who has been your biggest supporter during your life? Awesome. Well, um, it's tough. I mean, my whole family has always been there. I mean, my dad works literally like day and night for me so I mean always thankful for him because all everything he's done and just like my whole family my mom my, my, my brother I've always um supported me my brother looked after like almost my whole tennis when I was junior so I would just focus on playing um yeah, I mean they've been they've been huge and and obviously my mom works also so um she traveled to a lot of terms with me uh, has helped with helped me with with um, make sure I'm safe with everything in general. So my whole family has has uh, sacrificed a lot for me, and uh, lately now, I mean, even even my girlfriend uh, watches all my matches, always there before after my matches. So um, just having such a big family and and so many people that that support me, it's it's, it's really nice. Awesome, awesome. Um, maybe I will find somebody else that hasn't asked let's go here we go Paul let's hear from Paul so um my question is uh before your match what is sort of something that you do to physically prepare yourself like what like um what would like a warm-up look like before you get on the court uh, well yeah um it kind of depends also on what time I play because if I play in the, in the morning uh, I would just I would just warm up uh, my regular 34 minutes hitting uh, really work on what I'm going to try and do on, on, on court uh, right before the match I do more of a like kind of like a high intense 
warm up, a lot of like kind of like short sprints, um, uh, mobility stuff like that. But if I play later in the day, I like to kind of just have a have a long long hit in the in the morning. Then like either uh, longer warm up act, active um, sprints because that uh, type of that or more of a hit long in the morning, hit a little bit in the afternoon, and then like a quick activation before the match. Um, but yeah, I mainly focus now on, on really starting off really warm, kind of get a little sweat going and, and really active um, my heart racing. Great, good question, Paul, thank you. All right, um, if anybody else has, maybe we can take one or two more questions, otherwise, we will uh, wrap it up. So I'll just give uh, maybe five more seconds for anybody to raise their hand if they have anything else. But I think almost everybody got to uh, ask a question. And uh, Lee has already asked a question. So I'm going to see if there's anybody else. And otherwise, OK, Alejandro, thank you so much for taking the time to do this for, uh, for all of the, the students and coaches that logged on to the chat today. That was really nice of you, and uh, trust me, we're always rooting for you and following your success, and hopefully uh, you'll be back out there sooner than later. Hopefully everything will, will come back to, to normal, and, and you can carry on because, uh, yeah, you've been doing very well, and, and you had a really great start to the year. So all the best. Uh, thanks again, and that's it. Thank you. And thank, thank you guys you. for um, logging on. We will post this at oncourt.ca uh, for anybody to review or if anybody has missed it. And uh, I don't know if you have anything to, to say, Alejandro, but thank you so much for taking the time to do this. No, no thank you. It's uh, been a while since, since we've seen each other. Yeah. Hopefully we can, we can meet up or for maybe sure. a little bit. But yeah, thank for you. Sure. Thank you so much. For sure. I also just want to say I see uh, Doug's on, so I wanted to yeah. say hi. In a while, awesome. Too. Yeah, um, that's great. Awesome. Well, thank you. For sure. For sure. Well, all the best, bud. We'll keep in touch. Thank you. Take care. Bye.